If you rub this uh, rubberized plastic rod with a cat fur, it becomes charged. In this particular case, it becomes charged because it has extra electrons that it uh, robbed away from the piece of fur. And we're going to put those extra electrons onto this device called an electroscope. And we charge the electroscope by putting the electrons on. Some of those electrons go down the, uh, the piece of metal here connecting it. Some get out on this uh, um, little needle. They repel each other, the ones on the needle and the post, so the needle swings out. And that indicates that there are extra electrons on that uh, device, the electroscope. Now the idea, as people began to study uh, light, try to understand what light was, the idea uh, emerged that uh, light carries energy, but this light might be a wave or it might be a stream of particles. And people were trying to understand which it was. But in either case, whether it's, whether it's waves or whether it's particles, that light carries energy. And the idea was that if you shine the light onto these electrons, on this piece of metal, they would carry energy to the electrons and would be capable of knocking the electrons off. Insofar as that happens, it's called the photoelectric effect. The photo from the light, which uh, is shined onto the piece of metal, the electric from the uh, electrons, which are then discharged, knocked off of, the, off of the piece of metal, causing the thing to discharge. So, starting out with the idea that perhaps light is a wave, let's uh, get ourselves a source of light, your basic Rayovac roughneck flashlight, and we turn that uh, flashlight on, and the idea is if I shine that on the piece of metal, it ought to carry energy there and dislodge some of the electrons. So, let me try it. Ha! Ha! Nothing. Nothing happens. Well, that's a little puzzling. I guess it's probably just a dim bulb. Just a dim bulb. If light were, a, were waves, what we'd want to do is turn up the amplitude of the waves, you know, put more energy into the waves. So I've got myself a source of light that I can turn on that'll be brighter than that. The brightness would indicate uh, more energy. And so this time, if I shine that light on there, this time, ha, I ought to be able to knock the electrons off. So I start to turn it up. Well, that's about like the flashlight. Nothing happening. So I turn it up some more. All the way. Can't turn it anymore. Uh-oh. The electrons are still there. Well, that became kind of a puzzle for people. Um, the, the light was thought to have energy. Certainly ought to be able to knock those electrons off. Certainly if you made it bright enough, thinking of it as waves again, just make the amplitude of these waves bigger and bigger until you finally got enough energy. But, in fact, as people tried various uh, possibilities, the electrons remained in place. Well, that's where Albert Einstein uh, comes onto the stage of history in 1905. And he provides an explanation for what's happening here and explains what you'd have to do to knock those electrons off the piece of metal. But in essence, he says this, you're going to have to give up the idea that light is, consists of waves, but think of it in terms of a stream of particles. And he borrowed an idea from Max Planck. Now, Planck was doing something completely different. But he came up with this notion of quanta, the idea that light might be a stream of particles Little quanta then uh, came into Einstein's mind, and he borrowed this little formula from Max Planck to explain how much energy was in each one of these little lumps, these little particles of light. And the uh, answer from Planck was that the energy in a photon was Planck's constant, Planck's formula, Planck's constant times the frequency of the light. Now the frequency is what we perceive as color, different frequencies we perceive as different colors. And so Einstein said, look, if you want more energy in the lumps, more energy in the photons, then you've got to change the color of the light. You've got to change the frequency. And uh, visible light, the light that's being emitted by that source and by the flashlight, apparently doesn't have enough energy in the photons. He said, go to the next highest frequency. Move beyond 
uh, the red, the orange, green, blue, violet, the very invisible colors, move on to the next uh, higher frequency, which is ultraviolet. He said, if you use ultraviolet light, then there'll be enough energy in each of those photons. You won't have to wait or anything else. You just turn it on and uh, put it onto that piece of metal and the electrons will be gone. But in order to give his explanation, he began to think of light not as waves, but as particles, little lumps, which are called photons. 